Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to bypass a validation rule in Salesforce. And so this is something that comes up from time to time where it's really helpful to be able to exempt yourself from a validation rule or perhaps even exempt other users. Um, and one clear example and the one I'm gonna use in this video is if you're doing a data load. So you can imagine there's a validation rule and I actually have one built on the case object. So we could go take a look at that. And this validation rule, what it's doing is requiring that a contact is present on a case. And so it's real simple, um, but you could imagine that if you wanted to do a data load and just insert a bunch of cases all at once, maybe you didn't want to have the um, validation rule fire on that data load. So what this sort of process of exempting a validation rule is really good for is these sort of one-off scenarios, or if there's um, you know, a specific group of users that's not all in one profile or something like that, this is a good way to approach exempting them from the rule. So to make this work, we're gonna use what's called a custom permission. And so I'm here in the setup menu and you know, we can just navigate there again. And we'll just type in a custom permission here in setup and click the custom permissions option here. And because this is a trailhead environment, there aren't any in the environment, but um, you might see some here if you're you know, in a sandbox or something like that. I'm gonna press new and we're gonna make a permission and we'll just call this bypass case validation rules. And that's all we have to name it. So just bypass case validation rule and press save. And so uh, this is a custom permission and the permission by itself can't just be assigned. We actually have to add it to a permission set. And so that's the next step here. So in the setup menu, I'm just gonna uh, go here and type in permission sets and we'll click that open. And then I'm gonna make a new permission set. Of course, you could add this to an existing one and I'll call this permission set bypass case validation rules. And we'll press save. And then inside the permission set editor itself, we'll scroll down and here in the custom permission section, we'll click that open. And um, here we will add the custom permission that we just created into this permission set. And we'll click edit. And all we have to do is select our available custom permission and add it to the enabled ones and press save. And then as a final step, now that we have created our custom permission and um, created our permission set, we actually need to assign this to somebody. So you could imagine that if we were going to do a data load, we might assign this to the system admin that was doing the data load or the integration user that might be running on a nightly basis. Um, whoever the person is, we want to exempt from our rule. So in this case, I'll just do myself. Um, I'll choose Nick Freights from the dropdown here and click next and assign. And that's it. That's all we have to do in terms of the permission set. Um, so I'll press done. And then we can go back to our validation rule. And what I'm actually gonna do first is you'll notice how the, the rule is firing when the contact is blank. So let's pretend to make a new case here. I'm on the United Oil and Gas Corp account. And I'm just gonna scroll down to the case related list and press new. And we'll leave that contact blank. We'll pick the origin because it looks required. And when I press save, I would expect the validation rule to fire. And it does, it says, please select a contact for this case. And so what we'll do to kind of implement our um, workaround is we'll go back to the validation rule builder here and I'm gonna add an and statement and then I'm gonna add one new criteria and that criteria I'm gonna uh, insert by clicking insert field. Oh, just kidding, I need to refresh this page. Um, okay, so I'll do the same thing and we're adding a new criteria and then we'll have a parenthesis down here. And again, I'm gonna click insert field and you'll see that now um, we have created a custom permission. This option of the you know money sign permission is now available. And so we can click permission here and what this will do, just like all the other kind of options, like if we're looking at the money sign user, I think that's cash user or the current running user, it will look at the current running user's company name or their city or the current user's profile or the current user's role. And in the same way, this money sign will be the current user's permission of the bypass case validation rule. So we'll click insert. 
And then we can wrap this in a not statement. And so this will say that um, if the user who's running this um, operation or who's editing the case does not have this permission, then fire the rule. If they do have the permission, then they're all good and the rule doesn't apply. And so by pressing save here, oh, oops, um, I need to put a comma there. There we go. You know, that change will take effect. And now our uh, permission is being used in this validation rule. So if I go back to this new case screen, I may have to refresh, but I'm just going to try to save it without refreshing and we'll see what happens. And we see that it works. So a new case was created and our validation rule did not trigger. And then the contact name is empty. So again, this is a really useful way to kind of apply like one-off exemptions to people. Um, in this use case, it, you know, you may not actually be doing a data load of cases, but you could imagine that if you were doing a data load and you had a bunch of validation rules that you wanted to apply basically all the time, except when you're doing a data load, uh, a solution like this is, is really helpful. Um, I would also point out that in our permission set here, we have, you know, bypass case validation rules. So you can kind of segment this out. You know, maybe you have one custom permission for different objects. You could also have a master permission that just exempts you from everything. And you'll really have to just take that on a case by case basis. So hope this helps. And uh, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions.